Card Party, an event that brings together Pokemon content creators, their viewers, fans of the Pokemon TCG, anime, video games, and whatever else you can think of Pokemon related. It's a place for everyone to participate and experience the huge expo halls filled with vendors, the live stage shows, panels, and fun interactive activities. It's a place where you can feel comfortable knowing that everyone has the same interest. And it's a place to make new friends and be part of the best community out there. The day has finally come! Welcome to Card Party 2! This event is taking place at the Hilton in Orlando, Florida and is hosted by Pat Flynn, also known as Deep Pocket Monster on YouTube. Friday was the first day and the event officially began at 2 p.m. However, you would want to get there early because if you don't, you'd get stuck in this huge line. I mean, look at how many people are here already to pick up their badge and lanyard. But don't worry, everyone there is just as excited and friendly to talk to, which does pass the time by. Since the main stage kickoff show starts at 7 p.m., I knew I had a lot of time to go check out the expo hall and vendors. But that would come to a screeching halt because once I picked up my badge and made my way down the escalator, I saw the Card Party 2 shop with exclusive merchandise. Before even coming to Card Party, I knew there was at least one item I wanted to get, and that was a new hat. Before a huge line formed, I figured I'd give more money to Pat. I also picked up some DPM sleeves, which you can usually find on his streams. I know it sounds like I'm dropping some rhymes, but I swear I don't do this all the time. Okay, I'll stop now. With a hat and sleeves acquired, I was now ready to check out the rest of the area. This event covered several expo halls and ballrooms, all with different activities ranging from vendors, meet and greets, TCG play training and tournaments, an arcade area, trick shot challenge, PSA and CGC grading zones, and the main stage where, you guessed it, the main shows, giveaways, and panels took place. This was my first card party experience as well, and I'll admit, I was a little bit overwhelmed trying to figure out where to go or what to do first. But that's not a bad thing, as it means there's plenty to keep people busy these next three days. Speaking of things to do, just like the previous card party had, there were exclusive cards to collect at the event. Each card comes with its own unique challenge on how and where to find them. There was even a secret card you could find by deciphering the message on the sheet. Now that I had a goal in mind, I had direction. This sheet was the perfect way to help me know where to go. By trying to find these cards, I could experience all the different places and activities Card Party 2 had to offer. As helpful as this sheet was, I also had my own goals. And one of those was to get creators to sign my binder. I got many signatures on Thursday night just by hanging out with some creators, but I needed to have Pat sign this binder. So in line I went, along with my wife Lindsay. The line took a bit to get through, but while we were there, we ran into Brad from TC's Rocket. Yo, we got it! Let's go! Let's go! He has been featured in several DPM videos, helping Pat out with his collection challenges. After a couple more minutes, we finally got our chance to see Pat. During his live stream the Monday before Card Party, he wished us a happy wedding anniversary. Cruddy Films, congratulations to you and also Lindsay. Lindsay, shout out to you. Happy anniversary. I hope it's a great one. We thanked him for it, and he was kind enough to sign both our cards and my binder. Of course, we had to bring Miltank and Houndoom cards for him to sign. After getting the signatures and picture with Pat, we headed on over to Bulk Avenue to see if we could find one of the exclusive card party cards. It was simple enough, it was just lying on the table. This is by far the cleanest you'll see it during this event, as cards just end up getting all over the table. After hanging out and picking up some cards from Bulk Alley, it was time to check off another name from my list of binder signatures, Danny Phantom. Danny has great content and analyzes pull rates and statistics of the TCG market when it comes to Pokemon cards. His content is very unique and he is a huge asset to the Pokemon community. With the meet and greets out of the way for the day, it was time to check out the show floor. But before I did, little did I know I was about to get stopped for my own meet and greet by a father and son. Turns out they watched my top things to bring to Card Party 2 video. This was my first time at Card Party, and it was just so surreal to think that people wanted to stop and take pictures with me or sign something of theirs. To everyone who stopped and said hi, thank you. I was just as, if not more, excited to talk to you and take pictures with you. When it comes to the vendors, this place is like Poke Heaven. So much Pokemon product goes around, especially high-end vintage products, which is out of the price range of many of our wallets. I know I set myself a budget, and buying any of these would blow way past it. Yes, even I took my own advice from the top 10 video and set up my own budget. But getting back to the vintage, I didn't even know so many base set boxes still even existed, let alone this many boxes just from one vendor. There were individual packs, light, heavy, weighed, unweighed, singles, you name it, they've got it. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot.
Several raffles were also taking place at the vendor booths. I entered two or three, one of which was at Full Metal Energy. This was a booth I was going to stop by anyways because of the amazing playmats they have. Shout out to Gavin who also did the design for the Poke Vault X binder that I've been having signed. I was going to buy a playmat online a few weeks ago before Card Party until I found out they'll be vending there. Anyways, while at the booth, I decided to enter their $10 raffle, which got me two raffle tickets and a spin at the wheel for a booster pack, and if I pull a secret rare, there's an additional prize. I figured, worst case scenario, I would get a Pokemon Go booster pack. Well, don't let me ever buy you a lotto ticket because the worst case scenario indeed struck. But Gavin decided to give me a second Pokemon Go booster pack, which was really gracious of him. Now, it ain't all fun and games. There's a competition, a serious competition of life and death. Okay, maybe not so much life and death, but it does involve every single card party attendee, and that is Team Gold versus Team Silver. Before heading down the escalator, after getting your badge and lanyard, you can grab a wristband and choose which team you want to be on, Team Gold or Team Silver. Now, when I was a little Andre, I played Pokemon Gold. I played the heck out of that game, so naturally, I had to go with Gold. Evening came around and it was finally time for the kickoff show at the main stage. After finding our seat, we sat in anticipation. Featured creators arrived, excitement filled the room, the lights went down, and the screens turned on with a video montage of the content creators, Pokemon fans, and card party. Pat the Man Flynn came out on stage to a roaring crowd and introduced which creators will be on which teams. After doing a few interviews with the featured creators, Team Gold and Silver played a game called Part-Time Pokemon. How this worked was a very small detail of a Pokemon would be shown, and the team who answers what Pokemon that is correctly would score a point. After the game, it was time for some giveaways, and Pat called up on stage PokeSearch, who was hilariously dressed up as Miltank. For the most part, the giveaways ran very similar to his streams where the audience enters the giveaway, but this time scanning a QR code, and then random names are selected as winners. Once the first round of giveaways were complete, Team Gold and Team Silver had another opportunity to score points through a game called All in the Details. In this game, teams are given a small glimpse of a card. If they guess the name of the card correctly, they earn a point. However, an additional point can be scored if they also give the correct set it's from. Later on in the show, Pat showed all the different card party exclusive cards that can be found at the event, and a brief overview where they could be found except for the secret card. The final segment of the show was a pack battle between Cool Trainer Ryan representing Team Silver and Pokeball representing Team Gold. In this pack battle, they were opening up two packs each of Obsidian Flames. However, in the final round of their pack battle, they opened up packs from the 2001 set Neo Discovery. Cool Trainer Ryan started things off with his Neo pack and pulled a Hollow Smeargle. It was now Pokeball's turn to open up his pack. There are only nine Hollow cards that are valued higher than Smeargle. Unfortunately, Vault would fall short of beating Ryan Smeargle as the market value of the Polyrath Hollow was not as high. The main stage show concluded with Team Silver in the lead. Afterwards, there was a lot of late night trading going on all over the floors. Lindsay and I decided to go back to Bulk Avenue and find some cards to fill up our Pokedex binder. We picked up quite a few. I made a whole Excel spreadsheet showing which Pokemon I'm missing from the binder. But since it was getting pretty late, we ended up returning back to our hotel room and just crashed. Day two is a big one. Just like last year, attendees will have the opportunity to participate in a Guinness World Record. Unlike the previous year where fans were tasked with simultaneously opening most trading card packs in five seconds. Everybody ready to to be a part of Pokemon history? Yeah! This year would be a little different. I have never been part of a world record. It's probably safe to assume most people haven't. But Card Party is a unique place and sets itself apart from other conventions or expos. This event is so special because it elevates everyone. You can go from being a Pokemon collector to a world record participant. You can go from being a fan of a creator to friends of a creator. This is a place that can bring together people from every background with a single goal in mind, breaking a world record. And it all starts at the main stage. The line for the morning show was huge, and rightfully so. Oh, spotted John Parker. Seeing that guy is like playing Where's Waldo. I bumped into him a ton, but there was a particular person I was looking for in this line. And hey, there he is. That's Dakota. He's my editor and a Pokemon fan. I also bounce a bunch of ideas off him, and he has been doing amazing work with me. And this is his wife, Kiana, who I am meeting for for the first time. Now that we found each other, it's time to head in. The main stage show kicked off in the morning with Pat, and we jumped into a game of Who's That Pokemon? Obviously, Pat knows the audience are experts at this, so I thought it was clever he threw a curveball to mess with us. Every single Pokemon silhouette we thought we knew was tweaked in some funny fashion. Needless to say, we got every single answer wrong. Well done, Pat. Next, he brought out one of my favorite Pokemon YouTubers, who my wife and I nicknamed the Screaming Beard, Pokerev.
They had a great interview sharing how they first got to know one another, their inspirations for their work, and of course, a little troll with Mr. Mime, Rev's not so favorite Pokemon. The world record attempt was about to be revealed soon. But before it was, the crowd was treated to a very special guest appearance Chad, the Gigabinder. So, for those of you who don't know, Chad is a giant binder that holds 1,024 cards. Over the past few months, Pat was on a mission to collect one of every single Pokemon and put them in Chad. Well, it was time to take things to the next level because Chad was about to be eclipsed by a new binder. Introducing Vlad. AKA VMAX Chad, Vlad. This binder holds 5,000 cards, and this is when we were told what the world record attempt would be. We want to attempt to have the most people place a card in a binder within eight hours. And we have to have at least 1,500 cards here after eight hours. Y'all want to be a part of this? We were going to try to get the most people to place trading cards in a binder in eight hours. Now the number to beat was 1,500 people. So we needed to put at least 1,501 cards in this VMAX binder to break the record. We can do that, right? Right? Here's the thing, only one card can be placed per attendee. You can add any card you want and even sign it, but it can only be one card. After placing the card in the binder, we were given a yellow band around our wrist. This helped them track how many people will place a card into Vlad. This is a legit world record attempt and it is not guaranteed. After the eight hours are up, the results would be revealed during the evening show. We could totally screw this up. So come on everyone, let's work together. Because if we do this, not only will we be making Pokemon history, but there's also a world record card that will be given out to everyone. After the morning show, our first stop was to put a card into Vlad. While patiently waiting in line, we all selected our cards, signed them, and placed them on the first page of the binder. After doing our part for the world record attempt, we headed on over to the pack battle zone. Team Gold was still down some points, so I needed to face off against my rival and wife. After handing our voucher for a free pack of cards, it was time to pack battle. Depending on what you pull in a pack will determine what you score. Regular EX cards, Shining cards, Illustration Rares, Full Arts, and Ace Spec cards are only worth 1 point. Gold cards give 5 points, and Special Illustration Rares give a whopping 10 points. Unfortunately for me, Lindsay got the better pulls, and while she won this battle, the war was far from over. Before we move on, if you're enjoying the video, hit that like button as it helps me know I'm doing a good job and you're enjoying the content. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification icon so you'll be immediately notified when my next video goes up online. As we were heading off, two Pokemon fans, Caitlin and Daniel, stopped to say hi and tell me they saw my Card Party Top 10 Things to Bring video. We talked and took a picture together. It still surprises me whenever somebody wants to stop and say hi, but I always appreciate it. Interactions like these are my favorite memories. You guys motivate me to keep going and make my videos better and better. So thanks, Caitlin and Daniel, and I hope to see you guys again at the next card party. One of the cards from the card hunt we were still looking for was the Trick Shot Challenge card. Heading on over to that area, who do I run into again? It's John Parker! This will not be the last time you've seen of him. Now once we got to the Trick Shot area, I got excited because I found the gongs! What's so special about those gongs? Well, if you put together all the red letters on the Card Hunt Master List, you'll find out it reads, the secret rare will show when you hit a gong. This is the place where you get the secret card, by simply hitting the gong with a Pokemon card. Or maybe it's not so simple. I wasn't able to hit the gong right away, but I was determined to come back and try again later no matter how long it took. I was going to hit that gong. By the arcade area, they set up Gashapon machines. If you're unfamiliar, Gashapon is a vending machine dispensed capsule toy that's popular in Japan. After giving our vouchers to the staff, we were able to get a capsule. Inside a capsule is a chain necklace featuring any one of the Johto legendaries, Entei, Suicune, or Raikou. Both Lindsay and I got Suicune. In addition to the Gashapon machines, vault also set up a claw machine in the arcade area. No purchase was necessary, but the machine was on a constant timer. So we all tried our hand at it, and while we did our best to position the claw, none of us were quite successful in getting a prize. Back to the task at hand to collect the cards, the next card was the location card. To find this card, we went to the creator battles at the expo stage. Teams Gold and Silver were facing off in another pack battle. These happened every hour on the hour at this stage. Yet again, Team Silver won and strengthened their lead. Oh well, it was a good try, but at least we got our location cards. 
Going on this card hunt was another highlight of Card Party, and I hope they continue to do this in the future. At 1pm, Pat and his producer Dan were going to be on the main stage presenting a workshop on how to YouTube. Even though I've been on YouTube since 2008, I still consider myself fairly new to uploading Pokemon content and I could use all the help I can get. This panel did not have VIP seating either, so Lindsay and I were able to get front row seats. The workshop opened my eyes quite a bit, especially the behind the scenes analytics showing the rises and dips in what viewers tune into. I also appreciated the insight into creating YouTube thumbnails and titles. After learning a lot from Pat and Dan, I wanted to get back to Full Metal Energy. I finally made up my mind which playmat I would buy. But not before I had Lindsay try out the spinning raffle wheel. Who knows, maybe she'll get lucky and win a playmat. Or not, and get the worst possible packs just like me. Oh, Pokemon Go, you could have been so much better. Just go away. Anyways, I decided to buy this awesome playmat of Venusaur, Charizard, and Blastoise. Gavin was also gracious enough to sign my binder and take a picture with us. We then toured around the vendors a bit more. Lindsay is a Pokemon fan, but she hasn't quite made the jump into collecting cards, but Card Party was about to change all that. See, she doesn't want to just do what I do. She wants to make her collection unique to herself, and to start small. So we picked up an exclusive binder they were selling at the Card Party merch shop. Over the course of browsing cards, she spots a jungle Snorlax. But since it's in German, he's named Relaxo. That is just such a funny name. It kind of reminds me how there's a Pokemon literally called Lechonk. I think Lindsay might be finding her niche in this hobby. While at Bulk Avenue, she also started picking up foreign and cutesy looking Pokemon cards. The final show of the evening started at 5.30 p.m. and it was here that the results of the world record would be revealed. Everyone was super excited as Pat ran down the aisle towards the stage. To my surprise, Pat showed the crowd a highlight reel of Card Party 2. With footage only possible from Friday and Saturday, it amazes me that they were able to crank out a video so quickly at the actual event. Event. After a few gold vs silver battles between Real Breaking Nate vs Marie and Poke Chloe vs Danny Phantom, the time finally came for Vlad to make his giant size return to the main stage and for the results of the Guinness World Record to be revealed. attempted to break a new Guinness World Records title. Who, who participated? <laughs> Everyone with the yellow wristband, maybe you still have it on. That means we counted you for a new Guinness World Records attempt at most people putting trading cards into a card binder in eight hours. Now the mark to beat was 1,000. 500 people. However, I can tell you that we did have some deductions <laughs> once again. Deductions? Deductions? G.I. Joe? G.I. Joe? The mark to beat was 1,500. Today, in Orlando, Florida, You're the worst! You Did I say it? You know this is my bit, I can stretch this out for 20 hours. How do we have the room until? Till right now, till right now. Today you had 1,700. <laughs> Yes, we did it! We are all world record holders, and this moment will live in our community forever. And not only that, we unlocked the world record card for everyone. And you think the excitement stopped there? Well, you'd be wrong because during the last few giveaways, let's just say two people won a prize that's life-changing. And I'm totally referring to the content creator Ian with Ian's proposal. Following the show, Pat asked all the creators, both big and small, to come up on stage for a picture and be recognized. With the evening drawn to a close, people went their separate ways. Our group, however, had some packs to open. My editor Dakota and his wife Kiana are working to complete Scarlet and Violet 151, so Lindsay and I helped open two booster bundles with them. No hits were in the first two packs, however, it's not until Dakota opens up his pack that they get their first hit, a gold psychic Ooh, energy card. Ooh, we got the gold! It takes a member of Team Gold to pull gold. The next hit wouldn't come until I pulled a Golem EX. After that, it was Lindsay's turn again and she pulled them a Wigglytuff EX. Back to Dakota, he pulls another hit, a Venusaur EX. But things start heating up even more when Kiana pulled the first illustration rare of the night, Poliwhirl. This card has fantastic artwork. Back to me and Lindsay, sadly, we got nothing. 
With the last pack now, we're hoping for some magic with Dakota. Unfortunately, it was just a ditto. Oh, <laughs> oh the ditto again. <laughs> After that, I thought a little competition was in order. I bought a bunch of sleeve booster packs for us four to have fun with and see who would win a bracketed pack battle. First up was against me and my rival wife, Lindsay. Well, let's see if I can get some redemption. Team Gold has been lagging behind Silver this entire time at Card Party, and even though this pack battle wouldn't count towards our teams officially, I needed to redeem myself. Being the gentleman that I am, I allowed the lady to go first. Yes, just a hollow in her pack. Now is my turn. A Blissey EX! That definitely surpasses her hollow. Sorry, Lindsay. I move on to the next round, but at least you get to keep your cards. With our battle complete, it was now on to Dakota versus Kiana. Kiana opens up her pack and pulls an Ace spec card. These can be pretty valuable depending on which one you pull. Now it was Dakota's turn. Oh, unfortunately there was nothing. Now it was on to the finals. Me versus Kiana. Two members of Team Gold facing off against each other. Oh man, she pulled a Frostlass Illustration Rare. That is not a bad hit at all. Illustration Rares can be tough pulls in Twilight Masquerade. Can I pull something that is worth more? Boom! A Buddy Buddy Poffin! Team Gold scores gold again! This is the seventh highest valued card in Twilight Masquerade with a market value currently sitting at $40. And it's a highly playable card too. A good game all around. The rest of the night we had some fun opening up a Twilight Masquerade booster box and while we didn't get any special illustration rare, we did get an Eevee illustration, full art Perrin, two A spec cards, and a bunch of other hits. Unlike Saturday, which ran throughout the whole day, Sunday's schedule only goes from 9am to 4.30pm. During the morning show, they dropped huge news of where and when Card Party 3 would take place. Get ready because next year Card Party is going to be even bigger and will be heading to both the east and west coasts of the United States. For the east coast, it will be in Tampa, Florida from June 27th to the 29th. For the west coast, it will be on October 3rd to the 5th. While we were not told where the location for Card Party 3 West would be held, a place has been chosen, they just want to reveal it later. Since this is the last day of Card Party 2, I wanted to go visit some vendors and buy some cards. While walking around, I bumped into a possum bud. I just recently found his channel and typically tune in while washing dishes and enjoying his take on drama in the Pokemon community. It's the type of content I didn't even know I needed. Back to the vendors, I was on the hunt for some illustration rares and Wizard of the Coast vintage cards. I've been trying to pick up more cards from Neo Revelation lately, so I was really happy to find a hollow and non-hollow version of Ho-Oh, and also a non-hollow card of Celebi. The vendor was also kind enough to knock down the price a bit. In addition to the Neo Revelation cards, I also picked up a bunch of illustration rares from Paradox Rift and Temporal Forces. Walking around a bit more, Lindsay found a Master Ball keychain she really liked. They had so many great designs. I love that they used the sprite artwork from the Game Boy Advance games. We also found Terry's booth. You'll recognize him from several DPM videos. I wish I had those cards back. I don't even know where they went. One of the cool things I was shown was an uncut test print sheet from Wizards of the Coast. This was going to be auctioned off, but what I found so interesting was this sheet included both Pokemon and Magic the Gathering cards together. I never knew that they created sheets like this that included two different card games. We stopped by Tabletop Village where a Pokemon tournament and trades were taking place. While we didn't participate in any tournaments, we did have our own mission. Lindsay still had an Articuno to catch. We remember seeing one a while back but didn't pull the trigger on it because we wanted to browse more first. Trying to retrace our steps, we finally found the vendor. It was a gold Galarian Articuno from Brilliant Stars. I also picked up an illustration rare for myself. With our mission to find this legendary bird complete, we headed on over to the Vault-X booth to sign my Poke vault x binder. Speaking of signatures, there's Cool Trainer Ryan and Poke vault out in the wild. This is perfect because I still had to get CTR's signature on the binder and a Celebi card. I'll be sigging, devaluing. With a pick and a sig to devalue the card, we decided to chill at Bulk Avenue again. While there, I ran into Matt, Lisa, and Rylan of Rylan's Pokemon Adventure on YouTube. I saw them before on Thursday, the night before card party. They came all the way from Michigan just like me. We all took a picture together and Rylan asked me to sign some of her graded cards. Keep up the good work on your channel, Rylan, and if you'd like to subscribe to her channel, check out Rylan's Pokemon Adventure. Speaking of travelers, I got to meet a viewer named Jeff. I couldn't believe I met another person from Michigan. And Jeff, if you're watching, I totally appreciate your kind words. It's viewers like you that motivate me to keep going and do my best. So shout out to you and all the Michiganders that made the trip and I hope to see you guys at the next card party. The closing ceremony would begin soon with the final giveaways, panels, and pack battles. Five pack battles would take place between Team Gold and Team Silver. Pat showed off the current scores and as expected, Team Gold was trailing behind, but not by much. People from the audience were randomly selected to open first edition Neo Genesis packs. These packs are literally 24 years old. After going through the first four pack battles, it really all came down to the wire on the final two packs. Team Gold managed to pull a first edition Heracross. While not the most expensive card, it's still valued at $70. It was now Team Silver's turn to open up their last pack. 
Depending on what Team Silver pulls will determine who wins this pack battle. Skipping the pack trick and removing the energy card at the top, the final card was revealed. A first edition Azumarill. This card holds a value of $44, less than the Heracross. And with that, Team Gold wins! What a turn of events! All throughout Card Party, Team Gold was considered the underdogs because they had less people. With the competition over, there was just one more surprise. But this was for Pat. Unbeknownst to Pat, during the event, Dan and Ben were going around collecting signatures from every Card Party attendee. So many people signed it and Pat couldn't believe what he saw. The crowd even shouted DPM for Pat to show their appreciation for him and his team. This event was so successful and so much work was put into it. He deserved it. But as I reflect on the past three days, it made me realize that the most memorable part of Card Party is not actually about Pokemon or the cards we bought or pulled from packs. It's not about who wins or loses. It's really about the community. And I know it's such a cliche thing to say, but it really is true. And that's what Card Party helped me realize. Every single person I met, every friendship forged, every conversation I had, these are the memories that spring to mind first when I think of my experience at Card Party. Pokemon may be a collective thing we all have in common, but it's the memories and friendships that we create that are cherished forever. And it's through these things we will continue to grow and make this community stand the test of time. So to all of you at Card Party 2, it was great to meet you. Thank you to Pat and his team for putting on a great show. Thank you for being so welcoming, and I hope to see you all at Card Party in the future. Thank you for watching, keep on collecting, and I'll see you guys in the next video.